Take a look out your window. Trees sway lazily in the breeze. Birds glide effortlessly through the air. A closer look reveals ants marching dutifully down the sidewalk. Life is all around you. Now picture that same scene, but with three quarters of those plants and animals dead. Depressing. Huh. Well, it turns out that this reality might not be as far-fetched as you might think. It's happened before and it may happen again. The question is, will you be ready? Extinction itself isn't really a big deal. It's happened for millions of years at a natural pace scientists call the background extinction rate. But when a variety of plants and animals from all over the world start going extinct at a much faster pace than the background rate, that is a big deal. Scientists label such events mass extinctions. Over the past 500 million years, five mass extinctions, collectively known as the Big Five, have resulted in the extermination of more than 75% of species living at the time, typically in a span of less than 2 million years. Basically, natural phenomena like meteor strikes and atmospheric changes altered Earth's climate a lot faster than most plants and animals could adapt. The one you're probably most familiar with is the Cretaceous event which occurred about 66 million years ago, and was responsible for killing off the dinosaurs. Now scientists believe we are in the early throes of a sixth big mass extinction, largely of our own making. Okay, so a bunch of plants and animals die off. Why should we care? Well, plants and animals do a lot of things for us, from cleaning our air and water to pollinating our crops. Given our complex relationships with other living things, no one is really sure what might happen. Given a significant loss of biodiversity, or a variety of life on Earth, but it's likely to be unpleasant at best and catastrophic at worst. Will we survive? Maybe. Perhaps we can get some pointers from animals that have survived past mass extinctions. Maybe we can invent our way out of any problems we encounter. It might even be possible to head the whole thing off before it gets worse. It all depends on how things play out. To get a better sense of what a mass extinction might look like, and how we might survive it. Let's explore the ones that have already happened. Hope you're sitting down because this is some pretty intense stuff. As we mentioned earlier, we've had five big mass extinctions up to this point. The Ordovician event ended 443 million years ago, killed about 86% of all species. The Devonian event ended 359 million years ago, killed about 75% of all species. The Permian event ended 251 million years ago, killed about 96% of all species. The Triassic event ended 200 million years ago, killed about 80% of all species. The Cretaceous event ended 65 million years ago, killed about 76% of all species. That's a lot of death. But what could create such mass devastation? The causes for these events read like the scariest apocalypse novel you could imagine. Volcanic eruptions, meteor impacts, global temperature swings, and changes in the composition of both the atmosphere and oceans. While most of these die-offs took place over thousands or even millions of years, the Cretaceous event may have wreaked its havoc in the span of mere months. Take the Permian event which is morbidly referred to as the Great Dying. According to one explanation, this extinction began some 252 million years ago, when Earth boasted one huge landmass known as Pangaea. Global temperatures were higher than ever, making the continent's interior desert intensely hot and dry. Life was barely hanging on. Then, one of the largest volcanic eruptions in history began covering huge swaths of land and lava, and spewing massive clouds of ash and toxic gases into the air. After a short period of acid rain and global cooling, the entire planet began to warm in a big way. Carbon dioxide from the volcanoes filled the atmosphere and created a greenhouse effect. After 160,000 to 2.8 million years of devastation, 96% of all species were extinct. Obviously, surviving a mass extinction won't be a walk in the park. To the regular Joe on the street, it doesn't seem like we're in the midst of a mass extinction. Even experts admit that only 1 or 2% of all species have gone extinct in the past 200 years. That's a long way from the 75% needed to join the mass extinction club. So what's gotten scientists worked up? If you recall from earlier, a mass extinction can occur when plants and animals start dying off a lot faster than the normal or background rate. So a great way to see whether we're headed towards such an event 
is by looking at the current extinction rate versus the background extinction rate. And sure enough, a number of studies have done just that. One of the more pessimistic findings estimates that the background rate of extinction for all species is 0.1 extinctions per million species per year EMSY, while the current rate is more like 100 EMSY. That would mean we're losing species 1,000 times faster than normal. Yikes! A more optimistic study which looked only at mammals, pegged the background rate of extinction at 1.8 EMSY, and the current rate at 50 to 75 EMSY. But even in that supposedly rosy scenario, the current rate is at least 27 times too high. What, then, is causing all of this? One problem is habitat loss. As the global population expands, more land is being cleared for farming leaving less room for the creatures that lived there before. Another big issue is that many species are being driven too near extinction for short-term economic gain, think poaching and overfishing. The explanation receiving the most attention, however, is human-caused climate change. When we burn fossil fuels, carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere where it traps heat from the sun and causes the planet to warm. Some plants and animals just can't adapt fast enough to the changing environment and are dying off as a result. If we we are indeed experiencing a mass extinction, that doesn't mean we're goners. Plenty of creatures have survived before. You probably noticed that scientists measure extinction in terms of extinctions per million species per year EMSY. So what does that mean exactly? Let's say, hypothetically, the background rate of extinction is 1 EMSY, and there are 1 million species on Earth. That means you would expect one species to die out every year. The higher the EMSY number, the more species that are going extinct. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.